Welcome to the Delmarva Almanac. Each week we connect you to the best of Delmarva. I'm your host, Dana Kester McCabe. Fred Sprock's creative interest initially was in pen and ink drawing, particularly stippling or using dots to build up dark areas. But taking oil painting classes convinced him that was his medium. Most people try to categorize his work as Impressionism, but Fred says whatever it is, it's a work in progress. It's mostly landscapes, but to say what it looks like is difficult because good news, bad news is always evolving. And so when I started, you know, I was real tight. And gee, I was, my phrase is painting the cow in the pasture. And eventually I could paint the cow in the pasture, but then it sort of looked like everybody else's cow in the pasture. And that's become the challenge. Again, to answer, I can't really answer the question, what does my work look like? Because hopefully it's, it's changing slowly, but it is changing. It's realistic. You know what you're looking at. I mean, there's, there's no uh, debate there. Oh, it's a cow in the pasture. But uh, I'm not abstract. I'm, I'm not an abstract artist in any sense. I guess I'm aiming to become a subtraction artist, whereby, yeah, that's a that's a cow in the pasture, that that it's a little bit hidden, um, not symbolic or anything like that. And to to do that, I do a lot of um, scraping. So you put on one layer and then you just take it off, which sometimes is painful, but that then you leave a ghost image and get something to come back to and do again and again and again and if you're lucky you'll eventually get to something that resembles what you had in mind in the first place yeah, i'm pretty much i'd say 95 percent plus a studio painter and i don't have a, a a way to start paintings i have several ways to start paintings and so i really try to the first pass to be really abstract and just have the color, um, as Hawthorne called it, the color spots. And so maybe the first pass is real wet or real it could be thick. So so but do the first pass and come back and tighten it up a little bit on the second pass, and just keep scraping. And so it may be, I may have to go at it for maybe even five times. Fred is using what he has learned doing landscapes with his approach to other subject matter. I'm doing a lot of still life right now. Just to kind of step back and maybe that'll help me with the landscape painting and think differently about it, whatever. And so I've been doing um, a lot of bowls, you know, with onions and stuff and a lot of white and and, um, ceramic bowls and ceramic trays and white onions and such. Uh, what's interesting to me about that is the complexity of something so simple. Um, and when you really look at it, and I don't do any fancy lighting or anything, it's just like, wow, look at all the colors in that white. I mean, there's nothing new here, but it's kind of new for me. <clears throat> and then with a landscape on the other hand, which is complex when you look at it, the challenge there is to simplify that. So I've kind of been playing with those two aspects a little bit lately, more, more on the still life side of things, looking at something that appears to be simple and purposely trying to make it complex by really looking at it and then trying to pull it out. Fred says that folks who are new to making art should initially get some help from an experienced artist. Find a good teacher, which is really, really hard to do. I was really fortunate. I mean, my friend down in Charlotte, we're still buddies. I mean, so he wasn't just a teacher, we, we became pals. All the courses that I've taken, whether it was in that studio in Charlotte or workshops around and stuff, basically I found out they all really teach pretty much the same thing about finding, you know, I'll put it, make it the center of interest or focal point, whatever you call it, and how important that is to them. That, that would save you so much time, would have saved me so much. So I go out and paint this field and it just, it just lies there like a dog in the sun or something. You no, know, it's not doing anything. So that, that to me really can really just right there separate what's good subject matter and what isn't. Fred is process oriented. His priority in his creative endeavors is to continue to grow and improve. The, the, the goal I'm shooting for overall is um, 
the difference between an artist and a painter. And and the the painter, you don't know anything, you know, hold a brush like this and these colors make this. So you get a you get a toolkit of, of technical skills and you can you can eventually in time, if you stay with it, render the cow in the pasture. You got that skill set and you can't abandon it, but you have to start taking chances where if I do this, what will happen? And now you start doing different things. And I, I think that that's really the, the goal for me is to become an artist. I like painting. So I would paint seven days a week. Um, you need to stop every now and then. So for me, it's, it's easy. I don't, you know, wait on the muse. I mean, some days you don't get anything done. But if I were a banker, you know, the muse didn't strike. I don't get to not go to the bank. Um, or the insurance company or whatever. So you, you kind of have to be in the studio or outside, but to me it's, it's rarely a chore. It's really a pleasure. Again, the results might not be so pleasing, but the idea of going in there and picking up a brush, is, it stays new, which is really fortunate for me to, to feel that way. So that's, that's the work ethic. There is no work ethic. <laughs> it's a fun ethic, I think. Visit our website to get a link to Fred's website. To see his work live, visit Bishop Stock Gallery in Snow Hill or the Artist Gallery in Chestertown. Well, that's all for this edition of the Delmarva Almanac. Be sure to follow us on Facebook or Twitter, and next week join us to learn more about our local culture and get connected to our natural wonders. If you'd like to become an underwriter for this program, visit delmarvaalmanac.com support. We'd like to thank our community partners, the Friends of Delmarva Public Radio, the Community Foundation of the Eastern Shore, and underwriters EatDrinkByArt.com for their help in bringing this program to you, our audience. Our theme music was provided by Brightside Studio. This show has been a Moonshell production. Thanks for listening. Until we meet again, may the rhythms and tides of Delmarva bring you good fortune.